Welcome to Some Guy's Garage. Today I'm going to show you how to DIY rust proofing on your vehicle using a product called Fluid Film. So what is Fluid Film? It's basically um, lanolin based wool wax that is designed for rust and corrosion protection. Uh, I'm not sponsored by these guys but I've been using it for a very long time and it's just a fantastic product. You can use it for vehicles but you can also use it for um, tools and equipment, anything with metal that you want to keep from rusting, this stuff is great. It doesn't drip, it doesn't run, it just kind of works. And you can spray it on almost anything safely. Um, there's a few exceptions to that. You wanna try and keep it off some rubber boots, but, and by rubber boots, I mean like suspension bushings and things like that. But in general, you can basically spray this on anything and it won't hurt it. It won't stain your paint on your vehicle. It won't damage finishes or stuff like that. It just kind of works. So that's one of the great things about it. And it doesn't wash away very easily. Um, so, you know, some oil based rust proofing, they'll drip, they'll wash away. They won't stay on the vehicle. This stuff stays on and does a really good job at keeping the rust at bay. So today I'm going to show you how I apply fluid film and uh, also the results. So I have a vehicle here in the garage that I've had for six years that I've done this coating once a year on it. And you'll see even with Canadian winters, just how good this stuff actually works and keeps rust at bay. So let's just talk about applying it first. I have a couple different formats here. So this is a gallon jug of just the actual fluid film itself. And I'll open that up and show you what it looks like in a minute. But I also have spray cans. So price wise, the spray cans are obviously more, but they're very convenient. And I keep a couple all the time in the garage just for quick touch ups. Using the bulk format does take a little bit more work and prep and is a little less convenient. Whereas the spray cans, you can just grab one out of the cupboard. If you need to, you know, uh, spray down a tool or do a touch up on a vehicle, you can use these. To do a full vehicle, the cans, you're probably going to need, depending on the size of the vehicle, between two and maybe four of them uh, to actually do the whole vehicle. But this does work and saves you if you don't have any special equipment, don't have an air compressor, which I'll talk about in a second. This gives you a way to actually do fluid film coating yourself at home um, for relatively cheap. These are usually 10 to $15 a piece. And you know, for three or four of them, you're 50 to $60, not too bad. But when you wanna use the larger tins here, you need an undercoating gun. These can usually be bought for around $100 give or take, depends on where you get it, under $100 probably. And it's just a container, basically a pressurized container that you fill with compressed air and always have it hooked up to the compressed air and spray with a nozzle uh, the actual fluid film itself. Sometimes, depending on the sprayer, you do need to thin it a bit. But this particular sprayer that I have here, this is the, I don't even know if I can pronounce that, but Arcelin brand rust proofing gun here. Um, this one will spray at full strength, so you don't have to actually thin it or do anything. You just got to get the goopy stuff from here into the container, plug it into compressed air, and then you can spray with either the little gun here or this sort of nozzle, which is kind of a, a 360 nozzle as well, if you're going inside of, say, a vehicle panel or something like that, which I can show you a little bit more of later on too. But I typically use this sprayer, and it just gives me the ability to, you know, I go roll around under the vehicle and can hit all the different parts of it with this, uh, this spray nozzle here. Okay, so I've opened up the container here and you can see, you know, this is one I've used a little bit out of before. Uh, it does come a bit separated and you will need a stir stick to kind of mix it up here. But once mixed up, it's pretty goopy. It smells, a lot of people don't like the smell. It doesn't really bother me personally, but um, it is a bit smelly. And it's just kind of this goopy, get around here just this goopy kind of feels like a light grease or something like that, but is the, like I said, the lanolin based wool wax formula that they use here. So you do need to get it stirred up pretty well. I'll do that quickly here. And then I'll show you a little bit of how to fill the gun. Usually I use a pretty thick funnel and kind of, you have to force it in, but we'll show you that in a second here. So there you go. You can see now a um, bit more of the consistency here. Uh, almost like a creamy peanut butter in some ways as well, especially with the color. But that's what it kind of looks like once it's stirred up. So it's just kind of a beigey brown, uh, goopy mess that sprayed onto metal surfaces keeps them from rusting. All right, so the rust proofing gun here, you just need to unscrew the big container. 
This one already has some in it. This stuff's a little messy. If you don't like that, you can use gloves, but it won't hurt your hands or skin or anything like that. Um, so not so bad. This one's, I got maybe half full here. So I'm gonna fill this container up a bit, but basically I tend to use just the funnel here, grab the big jug and give it a pour. And then once I've got a bit in here, scrape that side off and kind of just push it through with the funnel. It is that thick. Um, but this is the, at least the best way I've found to fill these things up. You can see it come out the bottom there a bit. A um, little gross maybe again, but you know, we're saving money doing this ourselves versus taking it to a shop. And in my opinion, it actually does a better job. So well worth it in my opinion. And there we go. Not quite full to the top, but that's how much I'll have in the gun here. It's probably going to be enough to touch up the vehicle. Maybe a new vehicle will need a little more, but this should work for what I need to do today. Um, just a yearly touch up on the vehicle. So let's get started on that now. Okay, so we're down underneath the vehicle now. This is a six year old um, Lexus NX. And as you can see, there's pretty much no rust on all of these components. Just as a note, I do live in Canada. We get a lot of salt on the roads in the winter, but as you can see, other than a few little spots here and there, like tiny, tiny little spots, the chassis of this vehicle, even up into, you know, it's a little darker up there, even up into the tunnel here, it's all fairly rust free. Obviously you're gonna get some on the exhaust, you know, exhaust will never hold the rust proofing and you don't wanna spray the exhaust. So speaking of which, don't spray exhaust components, don't spray brake rotors themselves, like the brake components, obviously you don't want a lubricating slippery film on your brakes. And the other thing is to avoid any drive belts and things like that. So make sure you don't get up too much into the, say the fans or the accessory drive belt or anything like that. But otherwise you wanna spray basically all of your metal components. So I'm just gonna roll back along the vehicle here, all of the underside here into the carriage, up into these areas. Um, don't need to worry too much about the panels, but you can actually see. So this vehicle has had uh, a coating on it for its entire life, but it hasn't been touched in a year. And you can still see it's dirty, but the fluid film is still on the vehicle after all that time. So it doesn't wash away very easily at all. But continuing to roll back here, um, and same with the rear suspension and all of those components. It's all very rust free, you know, up into these areas as well. And I apologize for how dark it is, but generally you get the idea that this vehicle being six years old in Canada is generally rust free. So first, just a quick demonstration. I have one of the cans here. Um, do give them a shake and then it is empty. <laughs> okay, let me grab another one. Okay, another can here. Again, gave it a shake, but Basically, you can just spray everything pretty liberally, but you want to coat all the metal surfaces, the subframe up into the suspension bits, all of that sort of stuff you want to get coated. And you can see it just kind of leaves a little bit of a bubbly mess. Only the aerosols actually bubble. The bulk stuff, the stuff from the can doesn't bubble like that. So something about the aerosols do that. I've never figured out why. If you know, let me know in the comments below. But yeah, you just basically coat everything with a light film of this stuff and that's all you need to do. So you just repeat this across the entire vehicle. So I'll show you again now with the actual sprayer instead of the cans. All right, so I have the sprayer here. Um, you probably want gloves and goggles on for this part. It will get a little messy. I'm also wearing coveralls just to, to keep the mess down on myself. Some of it will mist on you. You should also probably wear a mask with this stuff just so you don't breathe too much in. And then just make sure you set up your gun for the right pressure. Uh, everyone will be a little bit different, but just make sure you follow the directions to have the right pressure for the gun. So this will be a little awkward for me. I need kind of three hands to do this to hold the camera, the gun, and the spray nozzle. But you basically do the same thing. You just pull. You might be able to see it come. I just pulled a little bit and it's come a little bit down the nozzle here, but we'll just keep doing that. And once it gets to the end, it'll start spraying. And same idea, you just spray away the whole vehicle. Obviously this will go a lot faster than the cans just because of the, the higher volume. But it's pretty easy to do. So you do want to spray into crevices. There's sometimes access holes. You'll see one there where I can get the gun in. So you do want to spray up into those holes as well. And 
Just make sure you get a good coat on um, pretty much everything. Just avoid, like I said, exhaust components, um, any of the driveline rotating components. Um, you can spray the shafts themselves. So like you could spray the drive shaft, but don't get it on the bearings and things like that. And especially, like I said, avoid the brake rotors. But anyway, I'm just gonna continue on here and get the rest of this all rust proofed and we'll see you back at the workbench in a moment. Just another place you should check. Um, so the door tie strap and the hinges, these are also a good spot to spray. So open up your doors and make sure you give um, the strap here and the hinges a little spray while you're at it as well. Also make sure you come up above the vehicle. There are spots like up here in the wheel wells, um, also under the hood where the strut towers are that should get a spray. So, you know, just give these also a coat right up into the wheel well. Basically anything metal, you wanna get a good coat on. So um, don't just concentrate on the bottom of the vehicle. Make sure you also look at the wheel wells and under the hood as well. All right, so that's gonna be it for today. I've got a bit of mess to clean up here with the sprayer and the actual funnel and all of that sort of stuff, but I'll do that off camera. You guys don't need to see that. But that's gonna be all for today. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. If you aren't already subscribed, please consider it. And as always, thanks for watching.